Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, we all know that the SNP Green government has been obsessing about pretendy Wendy's. They have been demanding the right that any man who wants to put on a frock can do so, can walk into a woman's changing room and freely and legally expose himself to women and children. It's kind of where they get their rocks off, isn't it? They're all mostly, anyway, uh, autogynophiles. They all get the horn for dressing like ladies. And of course, this has been challenged by all right-minded people who are not degenerate predators. And it's gone all the way up to the courts. Now, the court hasn't yet decided, but there is the re revelation that the cost for this bill is currently standing at almost a quarter of a million pounds. Money that could be spent better elsewhere, rather than letting predators have access to women and children. Take a look at this article to see where your money has been well spent in trying to ensure that there is no safe space for women. Here goes. So SNP land taxpayers with nearly a quarter of a million pounds worth of legal bills for flawed gender reform legal challenge. This is a bill that should never have come into law. How any woman sat in that parliament and voted for it is an absolute mystery. Uh, Hamza Yousaf decided to push ahead with the judicial review over Alistair Jack utilising a Section 35 order to block the Gender Reform Recognition Bill from becoming law. Because nobody wants it. Most women don't want it. Most men don't want it. Most people with children don't want it. It's only the degenerate pervs in the SNP and the Greens who want it. Remember, these are the parties that want to question five-year-olds on how they enjoy themselves, you know, touching themselves, what they think about when they're pleasuring themselves. Five-year-olds, this is not a joke. This is true. Uh, anyway, the SNP, the P standing for pervs, pedos and predators, have been blasted after landing the taxpayer with a bill of 230000 for fighting the UK government in court over its flawed gender reform bill. A bill, of course, designed to make sure that women have no safe space and that a, men, uh, a man can walk into like a DV hostel or uh, an R crisis centre, possibly even sitting next to the woman he R'd. Uh, and no one can stop him because if you tried, you would be guilty of a crime. Uh, one of the most controversial pieces of law ever to be pushed through Holyrood, the Gender Reform Recognition Bill was criticised by some women's groups, mostly <laughs> all women's groups, I would have thought, uh, due to safety fears. This is because it allows the, uh, the mentally ill people to change, legally change their gender without the need of a medical certificate. Uh, but it can't. You cannot change your sex. You just become a man in a dress, what we call a pretendy Wendy. Uh, you're still a predatory man, man who gets rocks off wearing sexy underwear. You know, tells you that all you need to know about these autogynophiles. Look at me, girls. Look at me touch my nipples wearing your dress. Disgusting. Um, anyway, concerns were raised that predatory men could abuse this right by invading formerly safe female-only spaces, such as toilets and changing rooms. Um, not could, will, undoubtedly will and have. Uh, the cases of uh, trans Ara of women, Isla Bryson and trans PD, Andrew Miller. I bet he's a member of the SNP. Uh, these compounded some fears about the reforms. Yeah, I mean, this guy's got 30, 20, was it 20 years in, then eight years out uh, with tags and on monitoring. And then he's on the, uh, the register for the rest of his life. He should never be allowed out. And indeed, let's hope that he does indeed spend the rest of his life behind bars, however short that may be. Um, the Scottish executive continued on with trying to make it uh, law, with the First Minister claiming during the SNP leadership contest that he would only go forward with a judicial review if the legal advice said they could win. Uh, now, given who the judge is, it's highly likely. However, the Andrew Miller case uh, is an example of why it shouldn't. This is a man who dresses a woman to entice a child into his car, a child who would not have got in that car if he had still been dressed as a man. Uh, and so that is definitely something that needs to be addressed in the decision. Of course, it was immediately uh, put up uh, for appeal. And that's so that the uh, the, the judge, this woman that, that's sort of very pro-trans rights, so a very biased judge, uh, can then not uh, use it in her uh, assessment because it's on appeal. Uh, and even then, if um, the appeal is lost, she'll say, well, at the time I was doing the decision making, uh, it was on appeal and I couldn't take it into view. And so you can expect that she will find for the SNP, but it doesn't mean 
that the that this law will go through. Uh, anyway, the two day hearing was held in September in front of Lady Haldane, a woman who has got previously, you know, form in going pro this line, pro the trans line. Uh, and so, you know, she holding this um, this case should have been an instant debarral. She should have declared herself uh, off it, but didn't. Uh, anyway, with the Scottish Government's Lord Advocate Dorothy Bain claiming the only reason it was blocked was because Westminster disagreed with it. Scottish Secretary Alistair Jack used the Section 35 order to stop it, claiming it affected the UK-wide Equality Act. Um, but the UK governor, uh, government lawyer David Johnson tore this argument apart, calling it a red herring and pointing out it was highly problematic to have two different gender recognition systems within the UK, uh, with there being several potential issues, including single-sex organisations, schools and tax rules. Lady Haldane has yet to make the decision on this case, but we all know where she's likely to come down because she's biased. Uh, but even if she rules against the SNP executive, they could still take it higher to the Supreme Court. However, critics have urged ministers to drop the case if they end up losing. And of course, the moment they drop the case, the Greens will probably get up and walk out of government because it's them that want this case to allow so many of their voters the right to get in and abuse children in safe spaces. Um, th this will be due to the hundreds of thousands of pounds already spent defending it, hopefully money wasted. Uh, and the government published the costs so far on Wednesday and revealed that so far 277,866 have been spent. Oh, so getting on for 300,000. Uh, with the majority of it going on external counsel and 6,500 being spent on court fees. Scottish Tory deputy leader Megan Gallagher pointed out that there was originally huge public opposition to the bill, which the SNP ignored. She said the SNP pushed through their flawed self-identity bill in the face of huge public opposition and warnings that it compromised women's safety and breached UK equity, equality law. And thank heavens that that may well yet be the, you know, the, the term that's taken. And it's this guy here on the left, the picture there, Andrew Miller, a man who dressed as a woman in order to get in and, you know, abuse a child. Uh, and that will happen a lot more should the Greens get their way and allow these mentally ill autogynophiles the rights to just wander into women's areas uh, and just, you know, can't nothing can be said against them um, because anyone who says anything will be guilty of a crime. And this is this is what they've done. This is what the SNP has done. It's basically legalising the abuse of children. Hey, look at my lady cock girls. That's what they'll be saying. And you can't do a thing against it because that cock is a lady cock now. Uh, when its legality was rightly challenged, said Megan, uh, they adopted the same stubborn approach. And now the Scottish taxpayer has been landed with a bill of almost a quarter of a million for their failed bid to ram through these reckless and unpopular measures. A quarter of a million and growing. And of course, it's going to end up near half a million, isn't it? Uh, the SNP should immediately drop their attempts to pursue this any further, take steps to address the real concerns about the bill and make sure the rights of, women's, of women and girls are protected. The Scottish Government has been approached for comment, but comment came there none because they know that it's against what the vast majority, 99.99% of normal people would say would be acceptable. It isn't acceptable. Anyway, I shall stop there and I shall come up. So there you are, an absolute rake of money spent on a law that nobody wants, just so some weird, mentally ill, mentally deranged people can pretend to be women and expose themselves uh, without fear, uh, knowing that the women themselves can do nothing about it, um, legally anyway. They can always do something about it, can't they? They can bring a knee up right into the middle of it. Uh, I'm sure they'd get the message. Uh, but it's not what people want. It's not what people expect. And it's not what should be happening. And any man that did this where my wife was in a changing room would find out that his balls would be literally in a jar. I'd have them, I'd keep them, and he would not be getting them back. And he can then pretend to be a woman. But this time, he'd be a little bit nearer because he won't have a cock to waggle. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that has enlightened you. Uh, and let's see if Hamza Yousaf has the balls that all these men have uh, to pursue it at the Supreme Court if he loses. I bet he doesn't. Anyway, stopping. Thank you very much. Till next time, stay safe, stay well, and I shall see you tomorrow. Bye.